Hey guys, what's going on? It's Cody back with yet another episode of TLC Trash Fire. So there is a new season of My 600 Pound Life out on TLC, and you guys already know we're going to cover it. Today we're going to start out with the first episode. I wanted to take a break from 90 Day for a bit because, to be honest, I'm a little bored. I'm a little frustrated with the recycled characters and the cast that they pick for Happily Ever After. But I'm going to deal with it, and I'm still going to cover it. But basically, I wanted to make this episode for those of you out there who like to watch the My 600 Pound Life segments. This is brand spanking new content, and that's pretty much it. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into this. If you could do me a favor while it's on your mind, go ahead and like today's video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you have subscribed, you could always become a member. And if you don't want to become a member... You could always go to buymeacoffee.com slash TLC trash fire if you want to leave me a little tip -ruski. But completely optional, no pressure, but I will pressure you to at least subscribe. Please, please, at least subscribe. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into this first episode of the new season of My 600 Pound Life. Oh, I'm most definitely trapped in my body. I absolutely hate it. See, I like this show because they stick with the formula, and it feels genuine season after season. Plus, these people can't act much. They're, they're just they're just who they are. This is a true reality show. Somewhere in me is this little glimmer of hope. I just mm -mm -mm. want to be a normal person. <sighs> Look at that. Just pure suffering. Their chances of long-term success are less than 5%. I wonder if it's the same with drug addicts and alcoholics and things like that. I don't really know the percentage of success, but that's very low. That means you have a 95% chance of failing long-term. You can't do it, and then I just get mad. If I don't make a change now, I'm scared it's gonna be too late. It's just an addiction is what it is. Okay, Crystal's story. Crystal S is story. Look at that, weight unknown. She's only 36 as well. You know, a lot of these people die before they're in their mid-40s though. I'm not trying to be grim or anything, but it's just true. She needs to get out there and do some farm work, boy. That would just shed the weight right off her. Push that plow. She doesn't look that big yet. Oh, okay, never mind. Well, God woke me up today, so that was a plus. That's a great but, way to look at life. That's one thing that's good. Is there's days where I don't want to get out of bed because of how bad the pain is. Because you eat too much, girl. That's why the pain's so much. Pain because of the weight, my body, the fat. Human body is not meant to have this much fat on them, okay? A lot of this stuff, and it really frustrates me. For instance, I watched the most recent episode before this, and the woman on there... Doctor now gave her her diet restrictions. She went home and then gained weight and then came back and says, I don't know how I gained weight. I, I ate less than what it said on here to eat. There's always an excuse. But I know I have to get out of the bed because I know if I am bedridden, I would just give up and it would be game over. I can't believe she's only 36. I mean, she looks a lot older, too. It, it, it makes you age as well, because your body's having to work a lot harder to keep you alive. Look at that. She can't get up. Are you ready? Let's go. I never got this big. I got big, though. I got, I got over 300 pounds before, but I've never gotten this big. Thank God. But yeah, when I was like over 300, I had a lot of pain, and you just don't, you just become a different person, like, you just ignore the mirror, you don't want to, you know, it's just, it's a very...
fucked up lifestyle. You're just like, you just, you just so addicted to eating that good food. For me, it was like drinking beer and fast food and stuff and, you know, so you just ignore all the signs and it's slapping you in the face and you know what's happening, but you're just like, uh, I'm just gonna keep at it pretty much. I live with my fiance, Damien, and my two daughters, Faith and Rye, and my parents. We have lived here with my parents for the last How much do you think she weighs? I'd say at least 700. And we just moved in because I needed a little extra help. So mom and dad said, come on back home. I absolutely hate it. I feel like I'm a child and have to have mommy and daddy take care of me. You do. You, you cause that to happen though because you ate so much that now you require caregivers, so. I'm sorry. There's so much I can't There's do. so much shit, it's like people do stuff and then they're like, man, I can't believe this happened because of everything that I did. Like addiction, it's, <laughs> obviously there is psychological issues behind it because I have a lot of experience with being overweight and addiction as well and you're literally choosing to harm yourself and to continue down the path of where basically you're just hitting yourself in the face with a shovel every day you know that the side effects suck and everything sucks about the lifestyle but you continue doing it because it feels good moment to moment and then but 95 percent of the time everything sucks <laughs> So, I don't see how that's a uh, life improvement. It's challenging, especially when Faith's at school and Damien's at work. It takes me having help now to be able to get into the shower and have a shower. Look how embarrassing that is right. for your parents to have to bathe you at when you're almost 40 years old. That's crazy. I, I And it, it's something you did to yourself. Like, obviously, there's medical reasons. Some people are paralyzed. You know, there's different stuff that's out of people's control. But this was 100% her choice to get here. And now she's like, oh, it sucks that people are having to be my caregiver. But she put herself there, though, you know? Her dad's normal size, right? Oh, no, that's her fiance. Crystal a lot. Getting in the shower, helping her with the shower. If we go to the grocery stores, grabbing the groceries and grabbing her wheelchair. And it's, it's very Look hard for this. her to move around a lot. Dude, that stool could fall. I feel like it could fall. She could really get hurt. and Or it could break somehow. Look at this, man. Out of control. Okay, honey. Yes. Can't turn it on. She's 700 pounds easily. Yep. completely out of control how can you get how can you get here you know i mean i know halfway <laughs> but i got to the point where i was like i'm so tired of being fat so and i'm still low-key fat but not anywhere at least now i like work out every day and i'm like healthier you know what i mean like you just have to be able to I, I'm kind of on board with healthy at any size, but when I say that, I mean, you need to be able to, like, really move. Like, not some fake healthy at every size. Like, if you can actually genuinely move around and stand on your business and take care of everything, then go for it, bud. But all I'm saying is it makes life a lot easier to be at a somewhat healthy weight. And that's just, that should be obvious we have to, to take anyone. The shower doors off so I could fit. The shower chair I did have broke. So now I sit on my parents' bar stool to shower. I'm surprised that supports her. Look at that. Look at her face. Look how red it is. That just shows how hard her heart is working just to take a shower. And it is difficult to shower because I can't reach everywhere that's important to be clean and I can you know only do the best I can I mean 
You know the sad thing about food is you can literally kick food in like two or three days. It's nothing like a drug addiction in my opinion. Because you can fast for like the first two three days sucks, but then it's easy. Your body just gets nor like used to it. And if someone like this did one meal a day, a day of less than a thousand calories for like four or five months, it would make a like a crazy difference. It, the the weight would just like melt off them, you know. Her weight gain it started really early. She was nine two when I had her, and the weight kept adding on to her. And you kept feeding her. her. Please don't tell me this one of those parents is going to blame this on the child. Because you instilled a culture in her of eating to eating her feelings. Please don't blame your child for her being overweight. When she started kindergarten, she was about 105 pounds. That seems like a lot of times she didn't eat no more than her brothers did either. But she liked to eat. My parents had a problem with um, alcohol. They would say there that you go. That's why they let her do anything and gave her all the food that she wanted. It's still not her fault, though, when you're a child. Your parents need to control your diet. They were going to the bar, and by 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, you could usually hear my mom and dad fighting and screaming. So they stress eating. All the kids in the house stress eating. This looks like my family, too, growing up, by the way. Everybody in my family was fat. I was like the kid on the left as a kid. Pretty much. Like, that was, I was probably, like, maybe 10 pounds heavier. It was scary for me as a child. But when I turned to food, it would calm me. So that's what I wanted to feel was, you know, at peace. I went to school, did everything. She was conditioned into that, though. That's how she treated her stress with her alcoholic, druggy, douchebag parents going out every night and then coming home and fighting. That's how she dealt with it. So this being instilled at an early age also explains a lot of why she ended up like this. Every other normal kid did. But school's very hard for me growing up. Kids were mean to me. They would name call and pick on me. I was traumatizing. I would want to eat. That's rough. And then when I became aware of being overweight was probably when I was 10 after being ran over. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> that took a dark turn. But, you know, I really figured out I was overweight when I was 10 and... I got ran over by a truck. A giant 18-wheeler truck ran me over. I was walking to school with one of my good friends. I got hit by an SUV walking in the crosswalk. And I flew from one side of the road to the next. And I had to have a whole bunch of stitches and staples put oh in there. Oh, my God. The doctor said if I wouldn't have been as big as I was then, I more than likely would have been did right there on the what so being fat saved her life that's sick dude i mean seriously she i guess it was meant to be you know <laughs> like the doctor's like you know if you've been 10 pounds lighter you would not have survived this so in my mind it's been like you need to stay a bigger size so you will be here Get serious, girl. Which I'm just faith, get off school. A doctor told me that I was gonna get ran over if I got ran over by a truck, thank God I was fat. So ever since then I decided to get fatter and fatter because it's healthy. I mean the doctor told me it's healthy to be fatter. That's how I survived the truck. So every time I'm and now I don't even walk anymore. Cause that's that's how safe I am and how uh, seriously I take my health and I should be home at three. Recovering from those injuries was tough because it gave me an excuse to eat all kinds of ice cream and just lie around. Who was and buying all this shit? The, the, the f***ing drunkard parents? So I kept getting bigger. That's when I realized food is a comfort. In high school, a lot of times was stress. I had a lot of anxiety. 
believe I was... There's a bigger you get. Oh, yeah. She looking like that in high school. She got no dates, man. I'm telling you. Like, it's just... You gotta be a somewhat normal way in high school to enjoy it. Because everybody's running around. Everybody's physical. That's when you're supposed to be exploring who you are. Having a good time. You know, if you if you look like this in high school, hardly anybody's gonna talk to you. And you're gonna get bullied a lot. So... I just feel bad for her. Her parents just set her up for failure. And then she just carried on those bad habits into adulthood. And now you can see it in her own family. Her own daughter's fat as hell, you know? 14. When Cody and I started dating. And I was 15 when we started being intimate. And then I was 16 years old when I had my son, Devin. He was a very unexpected child. <laughs> what? Why wow, they got Santa bored out in the background? <laughs> he looks like a creep. But I would have to say, me having my son saved my life because loving him gave me a purpose that I needed. There's a lot of heavy editing in that. She has this little boy, and so I made sure I had her finish high school and I'd take care of him during the day, and then when she got home, I'd say, here's your son. Congratulations, that's literally the least you could have done for your daughter. It's your turn now. But yeah, I've tried to help her her whole life. I don't know about that, but yeah, I mean, that was nice of you to do. For a career path from leaving high school, I didn't have a career path. I have had a few jobs that only lasted very little because you can't walk i couldn't do it no was... no what can she do the only thing she could do is work from home it's too hard on me she have to and even that has limitations she can't even move and so my significant other has always had to pick up the slack after oh devin God. was born me and cody actually stayed together for a while we even got married before I had my first daughter ride. See, she was at that, she was at the point where if she lost weight, she would have been a, a normal looking person with a normal life. But then she went the other way. She like got like four, five, six times as big. And you know, it's like one of those moments where you like pick your path and then your life ends up a certain way. You know what I mean? So guys, we are over time here, but basically I just want to get into the new 600 pound life season. So make sure to let me know in the comments below, did you enjoy me covering my 600 pound life? And I know some of you want to see more, but I really want to hear from the 90 dayers out there. Did you enjoy a little something, you know, mixing it up a little bit? But I'll, I'll obviously find out with the views reflected. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. Like the video, comment, keep the conversation going. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you haven't subscribed, please consider becoming a member. And if you don't want to become a member, please consider buying me a cup of coffee. It's easy. You just go to buymeacoffee.com slash TLC Trash Fire. And you can leave a little love if you enjoyed today's video or if you just want to show a little bit of support for the channel. That's it, guys. Have a great rest of your morning, day, afternoon, or evening. And I will see you very shortly in the next video. Bye. What the dog do? What the dog do?